The Lord be with you. And also with you. I want to welcome you all this morning to Beaumont Presbyterian Church via Facebook or YouTube or however it is that you're worshiping with us. Um, I know just being here this morning, it's, it's often frustrating that, you know, we can't see each other's faces and smiles, but um, I just want everyone at home to know that though we might be apart, uh, we're not alone. So there's a few announcements before we begin this morning. Um, if you are uh, tuning in and you don't know who I am, my name is Jeff Shaver. I'm the youth director here at Beaumont Presbyterian Church. And I'm filling in for our pastor, Stephen Fearing, um, as he's on paternity leave. Uh, and so uh, meanwhile, um, we are going to have several guest preachers, and they're going to be great. Um, and I'll, I'll just mention this. Uh, I'm filling in for him. So if you need any pastoral care, uh, please contact me. Contact one of uh, the members of our session. Uh, you can contact me. I'll, I'll give you my email address, youth at gmail.com. Again, bpcusayouth at gmail.com. Feel free to contact me. Uh, since the, uh, the, the COVID-19 outbreak, uh, we haven't really had Sunday school uh, of any kind here at Beaumont. And so if Sunday school is something that you, you really miss and you miss being part of, well, there's good news. You don't have to fret. Uh, our very own Erica Horn has suggested that, that we start getting together again via Zoom um, in order to have Sunday school. And so Sunday school is going to start next, uh, next Sunday, May 31st at 9.30 a.m. Again, that's next Sunday at 9.30. And so if you want to participate in that, um, obviously I can't read all the Zoom info up here, but you feel free again to contact uh, me at bpcus, uh, bpcusayouth at gmail.com or contact Erica Horn and she'll put you, uh, she'll send you in the right direction, or I will. And then finally, I, I just want to reiterate what, what Stephen mentioned uh, last week about meeting together. Uh, a lot of you might know that there are many churches in our, in our country that are beginning to meet um, again for worship. Um, and, you know, we have to know that we're, we're not every church, and every church is in us. You know, here at Beaumont, we have a, a committee called the Healthy Church Committee who loves you, who cares about you, um, and who in wisdom is researching the best way possible to keep us healthy uh, and safe during this time of crisis. So I think that's an important thing to say probably over and over. Uh, be assured that they are working hard to figure out what it looks like and when it could be that we could meet together again. Um, so I hope that's everything. Um, if I've left anything out, I do apologize. This whole pastor thing is, is uh, harder than it looks on TV. Um, so, all right, so here we go. Uh, with all these things in our, in our minds, let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Redeeming God, you call us to be one with you as you are one with Christ. As his perfect love casts out our fear and changes it to love, unite us by your spirit of peace, that we may be one with you as you are one with Christ. Amen.
please join in our call to worship. Let the righteous be joyful. Let them rejoice before God. Let us all be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, all peoples of the world. Sing praises to God most high. From the sanctuary of heaven, God gives life and renews the face of the earth. Let the righteous be joyful. Let them rejoice before God. Let us all be jubilant with joy. Please take out your hymnals for number 246, Christ is Alive. Sisters and brothers, not, God not only desires our repentance, but longs to offer us forgiveness. Therefore, cast all your in anxiety on God, because God cares for you eternally. Please join in our prayer of confession. Loving God, we confess that we do not always bring honor and glory to your name. We are rebellious and weak. We flee before your goodness. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us by the grace and mercy of Christ, that we may rise up again in peace to love and serve your world. Amen. Friends, hear the good news of God's mercy. Sisters and brothers, the Spirit of God is resting on you, to restore, support, and strengthen you. Therefore, be at peace in the one who forgives and loves you. Rise up and give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
Spirit of glory, Spirit of God, bless us with a word of life this day to restore, support, and strengthen us as we seek to be one with you. Amen. I'll now read our first scripture from Psalm 68. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful, let them in exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord, be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity, but the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked. The heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you showered abroad, you restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord, O rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens. Listen, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Holy wisdom, holy word. So lately, um, I have to admit this, I guess, I've been a little bit uh, 
restless or, or angsty being stuck at home. That might be, a, that might be an understatement. Uh, so I've been using Zoom a lot. I've been using Zoom to connect with friends and old friends. Um, I'm even using Zoom to attend a Christian men's group that I was part of when I was, uh, when I was in seminary um, in Texas. And so uh, when, I was, when I was part of this group, there was this question that uh, we, would prob- we, would al- we would always ask each other almost every week. And I'm going to warn you, it's, uh, it's kind of an, a, it's an annoying question. By the way, I sometimes ask my youth kids this question. I'm sure they, they hate it. They hate this question. Here's the question. What has God been teaching you lately? What has God been teaching you lately? And I don't know, maybe, maybe that's a question that doesn't seem that annoying to you, um, but it's certainly at times, I think, annoying to me. Um, and, I, and, I, and I've been thinking about that question, you know, what has God been teaching you lately? And, and I think it's both annoying, but it's kind of profound for the same reason. It goes against the grain of how we often think of our, our struggles and our problems. I mean, I don't know about you, but most of the time I think of my problems, I think of my struggles as something to overcome, to escape from, to solve, but, but rarely do I think of my problems as something to actually reflect on or um, something that to, to dive into spiritually or emotionally. And I think there's a good reason for that. I don't like problems. I mean, if I could design my week from the ground up, I think it would, it would be a, a week in which nobody disagreed with me. You know, it would be a week where I continually felt satisfied and entertained. It would be a week where my, my ideas were cherished by everyone around me. It would be a week where my family and my friends would, uh, would applaud my, uh, and celebrate my very existence. I mean, is that, is that really too much to ask? I think though we know that the difficulties in our lives, and certainly kind of this new normal that we've been trying, we've been trying to get used to, I mean, it's really nothing to celebrate. The question, I think, is, is there something God might be doing in the midst of all of this? Something that might actually be worth celebrating? You know, in our lives, in our trials, amidst this awful pandemic, what is God saying to us? What is God teaching us? So with that, I ask that you please join me in the reading of 1 Peter 4, 13 through 14, and chapter 5, 6 through 11. And I'm actually going to start with verse 12, because I think it's important. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Chapter 5. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourself. Keep alert like a roaring lion. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Holy wisdom, holy word. Let's pray. Loving God, caring parents, through my foolish words, give us And whatever difficulties we're facing, comfort, send your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So in case you don't know, the book of 1 Peter is a a letter that's written to a group of Christians who are scattered and they're suffering um, persecution in the area of Asia Minor. And I think at least in part, the question that that was probably 
you know, on the minds of these early Christians was, well, why is God allowing us to be persecuted? Why is this happening? Why are we suffering? Doesn't God love us? Doesn't God care? And I think those are good questions. And so in chapter 4, verse 12, Peter uh, assures them and says, Beloved, loved ones, don't be surprised. Don't be caught off guard when fiery trials come to test you as though something were out of the ordinary. So Peter uses this, this Greek word, uh, the Greek word Peter uses that's translated in, uh, in verse 12 that we didn't read, but I read for us, as fiery trials, is this word purosis, which is a metallurgy term. Purosis is a word, and you may have guessed it, has to do with purity. Purosis is about refinement. Purosis is about taking something that is flawed and imperfect and making it pure and flawless. We find this word purosis in Revelation 3, when Jesus says, I will give you gold, which will be puromai, purosis, refined by fire. Purosis, the, the fiery trial that, that Peter is talking about, is, is the kind of struggle that, that enters our lives usually for, for two reasons. Um, one is to change us, to, to sanctify us, to make us better. It refines us, it makes us pure. But number two Purosis is also the kind of trial that I think exposes the places that we need refining. I mean, in other words, it's, it's through our trials um, that we are exposed to our weak spots, to our sins, to our flaws. The other day I was thinking about that word, purosis, and, and it made me realize something about our passage, and, and I, th I think Peter knows this, and, and I think it's kind of in the back of his mind I think trials, when we face trials, they, they often uh, tell us one of two things. Trials or difficulties have a way of either exposing our beauty, right? The beautiful things that are with us, within us. Or trials can actually show the world some, some absolute, the very worst parts of who we are. I mean, if you don't believe me, just watch the, watch the Netflix documentary, Tiger King. <laughs> You'll never think of human nature the same way again. And let's be honest, I mean, I, I think even little, little trials, little moments in life can bring out the worst parts of us. I'm sure any parent that's ever stepped on one of their kid's Lego pieces in that moment, just felt nothing but extreme love and joy and affection towards their children. I don't think so. How do you act when you get bad service at a restaurant? How do you handle traffic on your way to work? How are you handling this pandemic? You know, one thing that, that I, well, I thought might be, you know, a whole silver lining thing from this pandemic is that, you know, it would quash some of the, the nasty division that we see in our country right now. You know, I hope that as history looks back at, at what we're going through, 2020 might be looked at as a year that brought us together as people and as a nation. And I think thankfully, like thankfully, we, we do have some great stories. We have many, many, many beautiful people who during this time have given us amazing examples and stories of love and sacrifice during this time of crisis. But I think the, the dominant image that, I don't know, might, we might categorize 2020 as, is just, you know, people fighting over rolls of toilet paper. I mean, I hope not. So Peter knows and warns us of the things that spill out of us when we face trials in our lives. In verse 8, Peter directs, um, the Christian to be sober-minded and watchful. The devil prowls like a lion seeking for that perfect opportunity, right? To take advantage of our weaknesses, of our flaws. Seeking that perfect opportunity to use our sins for destruction. So he says, humble yourself, be watchful. And so I ask, in the heart of our trials, in the heart of our struggles, during this, this time of pandemic, what is God teaching you? What is God teaching you? What is God teaching you about you? What are the things that are being exposed about yourself? 
What are the things that God wants to refine in you? Moving forward, I think Peter writes to the, the Christians who are at Asia Minor not only to remind them that, that God uses trials as refinements, but Peter wants to assure them that God is actually with us in our trials. Chapter 5, verse 7 invites us to, to cast all of our anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for you. He cares for you. He cares for you. God cares about your relationship. God cares about your weaknesses. God cares about your fears and your worries. God cares about your pain and your suffering. God cares for you. God cares for you. God cares for you. Do you know that? I mean, truly. I, uh, I have to admit, sometimes I don't, often. Um, I, I struggle. I struggle to believe God loves me and is really there with me in my trials. And so there's this one video that, that I sometimes I go to on YouTube, and it just, it just reminds me that God is there. It's a video posted by a, an African-American man named Jason Wilson. So Jason uh, runs the Cave of Adullam in Detroit, which is described as a, as a transformation academy for emotionally dis distressed boys. And uh, one of the components that, that Jason uses uh, as a means of transformation is martial arts. And so in the video uh, that I like to watch, there's this young boy named Bruce who's testing for a new belt. As the video starts, Bruce is just, he's punching in the air with the battle cry, hey -ya! And then this board is placed in front of him to see if he could break it and pass this test. Bruce tries and he tries, but he just he couldn't break it. Over and over, his left hand just kept bouncing off. You're pulling, Jason says. That could be a trial in life. Punch harder. Bruce tries again and he fails. Jason says, you're not punching hard enough. Punch through it. Do you feel pain? Bruce says, yes, sir. Jason says, Jason says sternly, well, shake that off. Let's go. Bruce continues on, and his voice begins to crack. And if you, if you watch the, the video, you'll, you'll actually notice that Bruce, he breaks the board. But when he breaks it, he, he starts to just break down, and he starts crying. Jason then says, wait, 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 stop. Stop. This is what it's about. Good. Let's get to that. And in a tender voice, Jason says, why are you crying? This is what it's about, son. It's okay to cry. Why are you crying, though, son? Bruce says, because it's hard to punch through with my left hand. Jason says, but you've done it before. Jason then gets on one knee, and he, he looks Bruce in the eye, and he says, you know, in life, there's going to be things that are going to be harder for you to, to do than most other things. And do you know that those, those things that may appear hard to you, you're, you're going to have to do them regardless. And it's going to take tears. It's going to take the blood of Jesus, he says, and your sweat to break through it. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Jason says, I don't mind you crying. He says, I don't mind you crying. I cry a lot too. But you're pulling your blow. I don't know if you're facing fear or you're feeling like you might not make it, and we all face that from time to time. As soon as we hit resistance, we stop, right? Because when we're hurting, we, we feel that pain. It's like, I'm not going to go through this anymore, right? And he says, we have to fight through it because it's going to be very painful. Do you understand? And then Jason goes on and says this, being a black man in this country, you're going to need mental fortitude. You're going to have to be strong here more than here. And he says, you can do it. You just got to put your mind to it. And he says, and it's good to cry so you can work through that emotion. So, of course, then Bruce, he tries again. Uh, he breaks the board in half, and everyone claps. And Jason says, always dig deeper. You may not be able to break that habit or whatever the first time. Keep fighting. Keep going. Keep going through it. That's where you're going. You understand. Bruce says, yes, sir. 
See, I, I, I go to that video on YouTube often. I mean, I, I love watching it. And, and it's certainly an inspiration, I think, for all of us to keep fighting through whatever difficulties that we're facing in our lives. But I also use that, that story to ask you, do you believe God is with you in your fiery trials like that? Your tests like that? Your difficulties just like that? Do you believe that you have a God who speaks to you and cares for you? Do you believe you have a God who, like Jason, stops everything, who gets on one knee and says, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Tell me. Don't hold back. It's okay to cry. So Peter says, cast all your anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for you, for you. God cares for you personally, intimately, tenderly. Is that something you believe? Are we allowed to have that kind of vulnerability, that kind of intimacy with our Creator? And and Peter says, yes, you do. Finally, this morning, Peter reminds us that though we face fiery trials of all kinds, the trials we face are only for a fleeting moment compared to the glory that awaits us who trust and follow Jesus. Chapter 5, verse 10 ends actually in a benediction. It says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will reveal, restore, confirm, uh, strengthen, and establish you. So Peter's assuring the uh, persecuted church scattered throughout all of Asia Minor that one day our tears will be overshadowed by a celebration. That the coming of Christ will be a day that's too great for words. And, and look, I don't know about you, but that's hard for me to imagine. That's, I think that's hard for a lot of us to, to picture. You know, when I think of what Christians call eschatology, um, the things of the future, it just seems so kind of abstract to me, right? It, seem, it seems foggy to me. But mostly, you know, when I'm when I'm, uh, I'm stuck at home and I'm getting fat and I'm binge-watching Netflix, it just seems too good to be true. I mean, think about it. And can you imagine a day where you won't even remember what pain was? Can you imagine a day where the weight of glory will overwhelm every tear and every sorrow that you've ever had? Can you imagine a day when, when we are face-to-face, not only with each other, but face-to-face with our risen Lord? And no mask, hard to believe. And I'll admit it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to imagine it. I mean, I think that's why, for me, I, I need help. I need help from YouTube clips. I need help from movies and stories and books. And so I'm going to end with this. And as I read this, I invite you, at home, here, everyone, to imagine with me the days that our fiery trials will come to an end. This is how C.S. Lewis imagines it uh, when he writes the ending of Narnia. But the things that began to happen after that were so great and beautiful that I cannot write them. And for us, this, the end of all the stories, and we can most truly say that they all lived happily ever after. But for them, it was only the beginning of the real story. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever and ever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. Amen. Invite us to sing together hymn number 662.
Friends, let us now affirm our faith together. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we, uh, before we pray together, I want to actually take a moment uh, to celebrate a tradition that I know has been around uh, here a, w a while at Beaumont Presbyterian Church, which is to celebrate our graduates. Uh, and I'll let you guys, I'll let everybody at home know, um, there's going to be more information about these graduates in the bulletin next week. So if you're looking at the bulletin now and you're searching, you know, for more info and, and all that, just know it's coming next week. Um, but for this week, I want to take a moment to recognize their perseverance, their hard work, and, and to pray for them. So first of all, we have Dylan Baker, who graduated from the University of Kentucky in a, a degree of political science and economics and psychology. He was a triple major, so congratulations, Dylan. Ryan Baker graduated from Fayetteville High School in Arkansas, and he's going to be uh, attending Fayetteville College in the fall. So congratulations, Ryan. <laughs> Gwendolyn Bl uh, Blair graduated from Eckerd College with a degree in biology. Congratulations, Gwen. Our very own Sheena Roller graduated from Eastern Kentucky uh, with a degree in school administration and supervision. Go, Sheena. Eric Seaman graduated from the University of Kentucky with a degree in mechanical engineering. Congratulations, Eric. So as we go uh, to the Lord this morning in prayer, let us remember our graduates as well as um, our, uh, our veterans and, and Memorial Day, right? Yeah, Memorial Day. So let's remember that as well. Please pray with me. Gracious God, as we continue to have our lives changed by this pandemic, Lord, we ask that you will work to refine us, to comfort us in our afflictions. Where there is fear, give us comfort. Where there's isolation, give us friends, give us family. Where there's sickness, give us health. Even as we are asked to keep our, our distance from others, help us to find ways to reach out to those who need our support. We pray especially for those whose incomes and livelihoods are threatened for the children who will miss meals. For those already uh, isolated and lonely and scared, loving God, give them your peace. And through our hands, ensure that they have what they need. God of sacrifice, we remember and give honor to those who have given their lives and who have served our country. Oh God, you yourself have taught us that there is no greater love than to lay down our lives for another. Help us to remember our soldiers who have fallen and honor those that are still with us. Let their service and sacrifice remind us of a day when your justice will come, a day when violence and war will be no more. God of new beginnings, we, we thank you for the, the completion of, of another academic year and for giving us the opportunity, though short as it might have been, to, I don't know, play a part in the lives of the students who are among us and our graduates. We are grateful for your guidance and love as we share in this work. Please bless and guide our graduates as they, they reach this end, as they chart new beginnings. May they use things, the things that they have learned to bring your peace and your flourishment into our world. And finally, as we, we remember in the prayer that you taught us to pray, let us not envision a God who is cruel or distant or indifferent. 
Let us envision a God, the God that Jesus was referring to when he didn't call God just Father, but he used the word Abba, knowing that we have a God who tenderly cares about us and loves us. Let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, in celebration and gratitude, knowing that God cares about us, let us take our tithes and our offerings that God might use them in return to comfort those who are afflicted. Please pray with me. Giving God, you truly are the source of whom all blessings flow. Or take our tithes, take our offerings, and comfort those who are afflicted. Bring peace to the places in our world that are broken. In Christ's name, amen. Our last hymn this morning is Fight the Good Fight, number 800. And 46, let's sing together.
Though we are apart, know again that we are not alone. Cast all your anxieties on God, for God cares for you. Now receive the benediction taken from the Message Bible of 1 Peter 5. The paraphrase says this. This suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God, who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. Everyone at home, everyone here, go in peace.